Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is... Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare. Espionage, international intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's adventure, The Cutchin Story, tells of an agent, an American agent, dropped behind Japanese lines in Burma. A story suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. The sky hangs low over Burma. In 1944, it was more than just the smoke and dust haze that blankets it in the dry season. It was the tension in the air that weighed the clouds down so that they almost seemed to be pressing against the wings of our plane. You ought to reach your objective in a few minutes, Mike. Good. I'll tell you when to hit the silk. You got everything? Yep. Radio, supplies, I'm all set. Boy, that's thick jungle down there. Thick with Japs. That's what I mean. I looked down on the towering jungle-covered mountains of North Burma. I thought of the small band of Kutchin natives who were waiting to meet me. I thought about how pitifully outnumbered they were behind the enemy lines. And how they hated the Japs. And then, all of a sudden... Ah! I didn't have time to think anymore. Lousy Jap fighter. What cloud did he crawl out of? It's too late to run. We're in for it. Sorry, you're going to be late for your appointment. Brother, what I could do with a tail gunner now. Hold on to your stomach, Mike. I'm gonna see if I can loop and get behind him. Ah, oh, he's still on our tail. Yeah, he looped right behind me. He hit our engine. On fire. That lousy. Yeah. Nice work, you got him. How bad are we hit? We won't make it. We're gonna try to belly laugh. Can we jump? Too low for that. Hold on. Watch those trees. I can't pull her up, Mike. I can't. I can't. I was thrown from the plane when we crashed. I got off with nothing more than a leg that was bleeding pretty bad. When I crawled back to the wreck, I found the pilot. He wasn't so lucky. I started to run. I didn't know where I was going, but I started to run anyway, through the bamboo thickets. My leg was throbbing with pain, and I tripped. The pistol dropped out of my holster and disappeared into the high grass. I didn't have time to look for it. Somewhere to the north were the Cutchins. I had to get to them. This was headhunter country. In those days, Japs paid high prices for American scalps. After a while, my breath came out. I couldn't go any further. My imagination put Japs and headhunters behind every tree. I told myself I had to stop. I told myself I didn't have enough wind to take another step. But I changed my mind when behind me I heard a twig snap. There was someone following a quiet, stealthy someone on padded cat's feet. I kept on running into the river. I didn't bother to look first for crocodiles. The numbness from my bad legs spread all over me. I could hardly swim. All I wanted to do was get away from that shadow behind me. When I reached the opposite shore, I clambered onto a sandbar. Safe. Safe. <laughs> When I looked back, I saw that tireless shadow emerge from the bushes and flit silently across the river on a fallen tree trunk. My lungs were ready to burst. I pulled myself up again and fell over some roots and waited, 
waited for that shadow to catch up with me. I just lay there and waited. Okay. Okay, you win. Where do we go from here? Well, say something. Don't just stand there. I probably won't be able to understand you, but say something anyway. A half-naked warrior just stood there staring at me, saying nothing. I'd have given anything to have had my gun back again. And all of a sudden I did. He just reached down and handed it to me. Hey, I... I don't get it. What's that... What's that card you're holding? Follow this guide. He will lead you to safety. Well... Well, now you're talking. <laughs> sure, and you couldn't look more surprised, Captain, than if the tall grass parted and you came on a field of four-leaf clovers. <laughs> I feel that way, Father. <laughs> like you turned over a stone and there we were. Well, that's about it. I thought that native following me was a headhunter. I know they'd turn any American over to the Japs for a two-pound bag of salt. Ah, you're right there. Unholy savages that they are. We saw your plane fall, and I sent Ying here after you with that message written on the card. He's the fastest runner in the Cochin village. I'm sorry he put such a scare into you. Oh, 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 oh forgive me, Captain Shea. Uh, did I pull the bandage too tightly then? No, no, it's okay. I don't mind it too much. When I think of what happened to the pilot, I was lucky. Ah, yes. It was a pity about the pilot. Ying, the scissors, if you don't mind. Thank you. There. Oh. No, almost done now. Then we'll go out and you'll meet the villagers. The women have prepared a special banquet for you. Oh, that's very nice of them. Have you been a missionary here in Burma long, Father? Oh, for almost 12 years now. I hardly remember any other life. These good natives have all become sons and daughters to me. <laughs> We've taught each other. I speak their language. They all speak English now. They do? As well as I. Almost. Then uh, I have a question, Father. Yes? How come Ying over there took ten years off my life, chasing me through the jungle? Why didn't he say something? Well, Ying didn't speak to you, Captain Shea, because he wasn't able to. What? He was a prisoner of the Japanese some time ago. They cut out his tongue. Uh, that, uh, that other roll of bandage, please, Ying. Thank you. Hey, Colleen, put more wine in the bamboo cup for our guest, eh? Yes, I will be happy to. Here you are. What did you call her father? Colleen. To make it easier for me, I've renamed many of the villagers. That woman stirring the big kettle is Kathleen. And the other beside her, Bridget. <laughs> I get the general idea. <laughs> and your name is Shea. <laughs> Mike Shea. A good Irish name if I ever heard one. Well, uh, actually, father, it's Michael Sokolnikov. Would you mind repeating that? Shikolnikov. It's Polish. I shorten it because everybody has trouble pronouncing it. Sometimes I have trouble myself spelling it. Yeah. I see. Well, no matter. No matter. Uh, uh, tell me more about your mission. Well, I was sent by the OSS to establish radio contact, Father, with the Northern Area Combat Command in Burma. Give them any information and help I can. That is, with your help, of course. Ah, yes. Well, you'll find us of great assistance. Immediately after the banquet, you can find a place to set up your radio. Say, uh, how are you enjoying your meal? Mm. 
My wife never made anything that tasted like this. <laughs> Did you like it? Eat well. Let me fill your plate some more. Mmm, thanks. Mmm, that's very good. Uh, what is it? We make it special for you today. White bees we boil for hours. Uh, I, uh, guess I've had enough. <laughs> I don't feel right moving you out of your hut, Father. Ah, it's quite all right. I can easily find another basher. This is the best spot for your radio. I, I'll even leave you the, the decorations on the walls to inspire you. <laughs> Ginger Rogers, huh? Yeah. That's your favorite pinup? <laughs> well, she's a fair lass, all right. She brightens up the basher. Well, with your permission, then, I'll uh, stick a snapshot of my wife up with the rest of these pictures. Yeah, that does it. You know, when I think of my wife, I feel a little guilty. Why is that, my son? Oh, I don't know. Thought of her going blind, squeezing all the news from home into V-mail, worrying herself sick about me. And all the time, I never felt more free in my life. Ah, yes, I know just what you mean. I love this life in the jungle, as well as the people, my people here. I don't think I could ever leave now, Shakul... Uh, Shakul... By the by, do you mind if I call you O'Shea? <laughs> no, no, not at all, Father O'Toole. Not at all. This jungle home was a far cry from the third floor walk-up in New York and the job behind the desk in the insurance office. The Cutchin warriors aren't imposing figures. They're short and squat with long matted hair and teeth worn to a black stub by betel nut. They led a simple village life, eating rice, trapping wild pigs, a technique they also used in trapping wild Japs. But they were friendly, happy people, and life with them was pleasant. Until one afternoon when a report came in on the radio. North Area Combat Command to Agent Shakalnikov. Agent Shakalnikov of the OSS to North Area Combat Command. You're coming in clear, awaiting message. Come in, over. Capture of jungle town of Michina and its airstrip is vital to aid Allied advance in Burma. Battalions of American marauders will attempt capture. They will rely on your help to get them through the jungle. Over. Agent Shikolnikov to headquarters. Have small band of Kutchins organized. We will do what we can. Awaiting further instructions. Over. Other native armies under OSS leadership have been alerted. Stand by. Stand by. This is imperative. Over and out. Well. What? Oh, Father O'Toole, I, I didn't see you standing there. You heard? I heard, O'Shea. This is a big push, all right. That airport at Michener could mean success or failure of the whole American campaign in Burma. I'll get our warriors ready. In the meantime, there's nothing we can do but wait for orders. That's always the worst part of it. Wait. <laughs> Quiet, my children, quiet. Now, it is as I have told you. When the order comes from the Americans, we will advance upon the enemy. We leave now, Father. Catch enemy ourselves. No, 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 no. That's not the way we must work from now on. The American will be our leader. We will do as he says. We will follow Captain O'Shea. North Area Combat Command to Agent Shekalnikov in Burma. A battalion of marauders on the way to Michina has been cut off from the main body of the column and lost in the jungle. Radio contact gone. Find them and supply reinforcements. Over. Agent Shekalnikov to headquarters. We'll do the best we can. Over and out. Well, we've waited two weeks for an assignment, but when it came, it was a beauty. Well, the problem, O'Shea, is locating that battalion. Now, it occurs to me... Yes, yes, Father. It occurs to me that if they're surrounded by the Japanese somewhere in the jungle, the Japanese themselves would know exactly where that spot is. Father, I don't get you. Well, 
There's a Japanese bivouac less than six miles from here. There are undoubtedly Japanese high command who have the information we're after. I've got you now, Father. Let one of the scouts come with me to show me the way through the jungle. We'll sneak into that Jap camp and bring one of the officers back with us. Well, the two of you alone? Sure, sure. Too many of us and we're liable to get caught. Just a couple of us can make it. All right. Wait till the moon is halfway across the sky. Then go. And the Lord go with you. When the moon was halfway across the sky, the scout and I set out back through the jungle I'd come from. Only this time I was a shadow too, slipping behind the bamboo thickets, cutting my way through the dense jungle foliage. We didn't talk much, only what was necessary. Jap, camp, close, now. Good. Jap, camp, there, ahead, see through bushes. Yeah, I see. All those fires lit. Must be some kind of a powwow going on. Sentry, there, where finger point. Yeah, yeah, I see him. We will surprise Sentry. Sneak in camp from there. Right behind you. No talk. Quiet, no talk. Noise, bring many chaps. Okay, through the bushes. Follow me. Watch for snakes. Is that all you're worried about? What about the tigers and wild boars, Komodo lizards? Watch for snakes. Snake? You move, he strikes. What do we do? Can you get him with a stick? A rock. Gun best. Gun, they'll hear us. Gun best. Rock no good. Stick no good. If I miss, you die. Gun. Gun. Boom. I stood there like somebody who had been frozen dumb and stiff. My heart was pounding like a jungle tom-tom. If he killed the snake, the Japs were sure to come running. If he didn't, he raised his gun slow. Slow. The snake was swaying back and forth. Dead. Snake. Much dead. He killed him all right, but we didn't have time to escape back into the foliage. After that, nothing's clear in my mind. There were Japs all around us, yelling like crazy, and lots of guns going. And the Kutchin scout fell flat on his face, dead. Then somebody butted me from behind with a pistol. And the moon went out of the heavens. And the sky that hangs low over Burma came down and hit me in the face. Wake up, American. Wake up. What? Huh? What happened? Oh, oh my head. I am Colonel Haichi of the Japanese High Command. I regret that we were forced to render you such stormy welcome. Colonel Haichi, eh? You speak English pretty well. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, class 37. DeWitt Clinton High School, the Bronx, class of 33. We will get along well, I think, if we make a little trade. What kind of a trade? Your life for little information. I see. The American marauders. I want to know their numbers, their positions, their objective. I don't know. If I did, I wouldn't tell you. God. Oh. That whip was simple. We have much more in store for you if you do not agree to be more agreeable to our simple requests. I give you 24 hours to think it over, American. <laughs> The hut they threw me into was small and dark. There was a sentry posted at the entrance. What I remember most about those 24 hours was the heat. Wet, sticky heat that made my skin crawl and my lips dry. It was a cute trick of the MIT graduate class of 37 to let the water drip from a pipe right outside the barred window. After a while, it begins to get you when you're thirsty. You, get up. Get up. Huh? Colonel Aichi, see you now. Up, American. 
Okay, okay, get your hands off me. What? What's that? Uh, stampede! Stampede! Elephant! Oh! Good work, Ying! Good work! That's one less Japanese to worry us. Father O'Toole, where'd you come from? What is this? No time for long explanations now, lad. Uh, they outnumbered us 50 to 1, and we needed heavy ammunition. Elephants were the heaviest we could find. Yeah, but how did you... Well, when you didn't come back, I sent a runner. We found the body of this guy. Come, we must leave now. Yeah, but the information I came to get. Oh, oh, oh that. We'll take it with us. Kutchin warriors in this village have a grudge against your people, Colonel Hayachi. Maybe you can tell us why. You cannot frighten me, American. You get no information from me. Shoes on the other foot now, huh? So it would seem. Ying. I'd like you to meet Ying, Colonel Hayachi. Some months ago, he was a Japanese prisoner. His tongue was cut out. I'm going to turn you over to Ying. No, no. He can ask you questions his own way. Go on, take him. No, no, no. No, get him away from me. I will tell you what you want to know. I will tell you why we have surrounded lost battalion. I tell you where they are. That's more like it. Start talking. warriors got ready to attack, and a great holiday spirit took over the village. But we must come. We always come, Moshe, when our warriors go ambush Japanese. But this is crazy. I can't have a lot of women and kids and old men tagging along. We go. We go. Old men carry flintlock, muzzle loader. Women, we do our job also. Now, wait a minute. When battle finish, women cook big party, samba deer, monkey meat. What, and serve it piping hot in the front lines? Nothing doing. I'm going to see Father O'Toole about this. You have your troubles, I have mine, O'Shea. But we can't let that whole tribe come along. This isn't kids' play. They'll come whether you like them to or not, O'Shea. They always do. In the meanwhile, look at my predicament. Some son of Satan stole me false teeth. What am I to do without me, teeth? Father O'Toole, please, we haven't much time. Aichi gave us a map. We know where the marauders and the Jap attackers are. But we won't do them any good just sitting here. I'm not just sitting here, O'Shea. I'm trying to find me, teeth. The whole village went along, whether I liked it or not. And Father O'Toole came along, too. Without his teeth. The Kutchin warrior knew the back trails of the jungle as well as I knew 42nd Street. Ying seemed to be the leader, and he led us through little known passes and long hidden underbrush, closer and closer to the spot where we knew the Japs had the American battalion cut off, helpless, just where they wanted them. No one made a sound, and Ying held up his hand. What is it, Ying? This junction of the two trails. He's not sure which one to take. That's it, Ying, isn't it? Well, why don't we split up? Half of us go one way and the no, other... No, 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 there aren't enough of us. The Cutchins have their own methods. Why is Ying pointing at me? He's giving you the honor of contributing a hair from your head. A what? A hair from your head. Here, let me have one. Ah, thank you. Here you are, Ying. Why is he throwing it on the ground? We'll go in the direction the hair points. It's not very scientific. No, but it always works. Ah, it points to the right. We'll go to the right. You're right, Father O'Toole, it did work. Here are the chaps. And there are the marauders dug into those foxholes. Yeah, they're surrounded, all right, poor lads. So wonder they held out this long. Our business then is to attack the enemy from the rear and give the battalion a chance to hit back. We can't attack them. There's too many of them. We'll have to ambush them. Yes, yes, true. I, if only I had me teeth, I could think better. Ying, some of you others, come here. Listen, our only chance is to draw them off from the left. There's a clearing there. 
It'll give the marauders a chance to get out of that encirclement. We chase Jap soldier up here. We set trap for them. That's the idea. Panji! We make Panji! Panji? What's that? Hey, you want a trap set? What? You're about to witness the cutting secret weapon. What are they doing? They're whittling those bamboo poles to sharp points. Then they'll stick them at the slant beneath the underbrush on either side of the trail. When the enemy passes, our warriors will fire, and the Japanese will dive to the sides. I get it, and cut themselves to ribbons. Very effective. Very pretty. The natives work quickly. The women helping them whittle the bamboo to razor points. When everything was ready, I took a few of our men to the left flank, and we fired. And they ran right into our trap. Very effective. Not so pretty. They committed mass Harry Curry all along the trail. That's all there was to it. Well, I never thought we'd get out of those foxholes alive, Captain Shikolnikov. Thanks for helping us chase the rest of the Japs off. I'm glad we could help, Major. The Cutchins will lead you the rest of the way through the jungle so you can rejoin the main body of your column. Can we leave now? Oh, no, Major. The women would be insulted. I drilled in the battle. They were busy preparing the victory feast. <laughs> Pretty sure of themselves, weren't they? <laughs> Good wives. They have confidence in their husbands. <laughs> the feast is ready. Uh, they're even dressed for it. <laughs> Look at that. Flowers in their hair and everything. All dressed up. One of them is overdressed. Colleen, come here. Yes, father. Don't you yes, father me. What do you got around your neck? Well, Pretty necklace. I bow for the victory. My false teeth. Now, you find yourself another necklace and give them back to me. No, no, then I have nothing. This pretty... Oh, I said... Colleen, Colleen, listen to me. Here, uh, here's something prettier. My sharpshooter's medal. Sharpshooter? Mm-hmm. Every American soldier has one to give to the prettiest girl he meets. Would you like it? Hmm. So shiny. Ribbon pretty, too. Father O'Toole, you have back your teeth. <laughs> Captain Shekolnikov, you're worthy of the name of O'Shea. The capture of the vital airstrip and the ultimate conquest of Michina was due to the combined efforts of the marauders who attacked it and the Kuchin warriors who helped them and harassed the enemy all along the way. And once more, the report of an OSS agent closes with the words, Mission accomplished. A further adventure in black warfare is next week's... Cloak and Dagger. Heard in today's Cloak and Dagger adventure were Raymond Edward Johnson, Carl Weber, Bill Quinn, Joe Julian, Everett Sloan, Inga Adams, Jackson Beck, and Jerry Jarrett. The script was written by Winifred Wolfe and Jack Gordon. Music was under the direction of John Gart. Today's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This has been a Lewis G. Cowan production in association with Alfred Hollander and was under the direction and supervision of Sherman Marks. Robert Warren speaking. Do you enjoy a capricious caper or a melodramatic mystery? NBC offers three of the best for your pleasure later today. A giant among men, the big guy leads off, with Vincent Price as the saint close behind. Topping off this list is Sam Spade, license number 137596, in the Elmer Longtail caper. So listen for three top mysteries on NBC.